let me request dr roy to give his keynote address and also a very enlightening address to all of you dr roy thank you raju namaskar first of all i must thank policy bazaar for inviting me i was in two minds should i go or not go but then i thought that it may be a good idea to be here because this place certainly needs a little bit of more of help i thought if i go and share some of my experiences maybe somebody will get encouraged and somebody may do something which will add to that little bit more in healthcare and keep on pushing the envelope so all i'm very happy to see a lot of students here beside my college colleagues on the dais beyond the dais to all of you entrepreneurship health entrepreneurship they have coined health entrepreneurship is not about outside it's about inside the journey is not outside journey is inside you start traveling inside and then you conquer the world you conquer first yourself because it's not a government job that you will get a money on first there may not be any money coming there may not be any money going anywhere you may be static you may be uh, stranded so you will have to win yourself first and once you win yourself then only you should walk into this path if most of you are looking for a job then you are not truly an entrepreneur you are just a job seeker you are looking for career there are three things which attract people three things that you just want a job why do you study you just want a job i get a job i'll be okay second those people are normally just pushing the paper and pen they just push the file they are job seekers second level is those who want to build a career they want to become a doctor engineer entrepreneur they want to do something they want to make difference to themselves and others those are career minded and third is who are helping others who are helping a larger force for them is not just a career it's helping like a soldier soldier is not just uh, building his career he is serving his country a teacher he is creating his students he is creating a future of his country so there are three levels of job seekers you have to decide which level you belong to so let's come back to the health first of all i'm extremely thankful to dr malay's uh, address who is not here he left that man came here in somewhere 88 89 90 32 years have passed he lived here 32 years back when i came to telugu there was nothing one who decided like him 32 years back to settle down him dr arch agarwal dr salil datta dr shantanu kar dr sain who built multiple institutions who opened clinics who served here lived here and many of them died here but they served they sowed the truly the seed of healthcare development in this place silikuri is a trader's town there hardly any population most of the population is moving population coming and going there the fixed population was very limited now what you are seeing is far more but then initially you right out there is only one or two trains you are only connected to the people who are going to darjeeling or sikkim there no other way you could connect to anybody anywhere as dr malay said that if anybody had a bleed in the brain and uh, he cannot be taken out there nothing you can do about it 
a simple bar hole could have saved a lot of lives. And Dr. Malay Chakravarti has done that. I'm sure he would have saved hundreds and thousands of lives. Imagine his commitment, a young doctor, he's now 70. When he came here, he must have been 35. At the age of 35, Dr. Bhaktur, the passion to build something in Siliguri, where you can't travel out, don't have place to live, there's no decent place to eat food, there's no, uh, and bring up your children, it was not an easy commitment. So we must thank all those who put the foundation of good healthcare in Siliguri. These are the people who must be remembered. I remember when I came here in 2008 to take over uh, North Bengal Clinic. We took over North Bengal Clinic and today is one of the iconic figures. Half of the children were born in this town, in that clinic. Between Dr. Salil Dutta, Dr. Vishwajit Dey, Dr. Shantanukar, and Dr. Hussain, most of the patients coming down from Darjeeling never went anywhere but North Bengal Clinic. That was the destination, single destination. So what is the need of the place? Health entrepreneurship or any entrepreneurship, you must know the need of the place. What is the need of the place and how best to address it? We can put a robot here. I have put a robot in Calcutta in my hospital. We are doing 40 to 50 surgeries a month. If I put a robot here, I won't even recover its operating cost. Forget about the cost of the robot. That's not possible. Though I have money, I have institution, I have doctors to operate. I remember in peak of COVID, when the patient were transported from here by ambulance, because the air ambulance had re refused. On the surface ambulance, they were transported to us for ECMO. At least 10 to 20 patients we got from here for ECMO. Some of them survived, some of them didn't. So the need of the place is very important decision making in your entrepreneurship journey. If you make a wrong investment in the place, which doesn't need it, then you are in trouble. Now, if you want to start something in a place, the most important thing is not how much money you are ready to put in. What is the role of the government? Is the government proactive, supportive? As a DM said in the beginning, that it is very, government is very helpful for starting a health setup. Very good, very positive. If government is forthcoming, supportive, then a lot of your obstacles will be removed. Government may not support, but if just government doesn't like to put obstacle, you are half done, you are, you are successful. So if there's a government which doesn't obstruct, and it's a government which is supportive, you are done. Role of private, that's an important thing. See, healthcare doesn't belong to an individual. Healthcare doesn't belong to the government. Healthcare doesn't belong to the private sector. Healthcare belongs to the state. Because anybody, anyone, whether it's in government or private, can use healthcare. If you meet with an accident in front of North Bengal Medical College, you will not wait to go somewhere else. You'll go straight to North Bengal Medical College, whoever you may be. So the healthcare is, does not matter who owns it. It is meant for public. Like our ambulance dada was saying in the morning, we go everywhere. We take our patients everywhere. I take our patients to Dr. Malay, Dr. Malay Chakurti. He did the surgery, which Hyderabad said seven and a half lakhs. He did for one and a half lakhs. So we see a lot of money. So healthcare is insensitive to who owns it. Healthcare belongs to every citizen of the state. Does not matter who owns it. But if the government and private come together, that is the best expression of healthcare in the world. How? This is something which is very important. What happens? Those who are in government, they think that government is the right custodian of healthcare delivery. And those who are in private, they think that private is the most capable of delivering healthcare. Both are wrong. The health somewhere the truth lies somewhere in between. 
neither government can do everything nor private health care can do everything somewhere in between where both point hands just an example the maximum defunct hospitals are lying with the government in public in semi public pure uh, public pure government there are multiple institutions in this country thousands and thousands which are not functioning non functional and they, there are 70% of the population uses private hospitals for the treatment so if we can build a bridge between both private and public then we can utilize all those hospitals which are not performing that's a possible the only thing is that the government has to trust public and pub and private hospitals and private hospitals have to be uh truthful and must be transparent if the private are transparent and government is believing then we can work together see the covid what happened do you think covid would have passed without private and public joining hands so strongly and so beautifully everywhere the government and private were together they walked together and we all won we won the war pandemic by being one not as being two independent so this middle path if both private and public understand unfortunately very difficult to explain we have failed thousand times whenever we go to uh, uh, secretary uh, government secretary he thinks he is bigger when you come to me i think i own the hospital i am bigger where is the middle path we all are serving a purpose in our own locations own places we both are important uh, cog in a very big wheel known as healthcare delivery i think some kind of bridging will be required to really see a successful health partnership in this country the role of civil society where is civil society in this country how responsible they are utterly responsible you know the number of seats being taken for medicine is falling every year you know why because they find it tough to cope up second with encouragement in the country you are building so many middle colleges same thing will happen what has happened to engineering colleges in this country half the engineering colleges are empty only half have got patient uh, uh, candidate so same thing is going to happen in the hospital also our dnb seats 30% seats are going vacant of course you know that na everywhere the people are not taking up healthcare because they feel that civil society is very unresponsive they are very critical they are hyper critical see i am not saying that doctors are not necessarily every doctor is a good doctor is every judge a good judge is every lawyer is a good lawyer is every is is a good is is every ips is a good ips why do you expect every doctor to be a good doctor there will be black sheep as any other uh, society has it but why identify them look at the good points and balance it as i was saying about public and private that let's not take our extreme positions let's come to the middle path and see where the truth lies there are very good doctors there are bike ambulance dada also there are doctors who takes 1 rupee in see patient there are doctors who are committed there doctor like dr vishwa mala chakravarti who have committed their life in delivering good care so if civil society rises and respects more youngsters will come forward and join more brain will come forward otherwise you will have people coming from a worse middle colleges and delivering worse care i am worried that what will happen to your future generation who will see them when we were doctors when we pass mbbs my professor used to hold my hand and made me feel this liver and spleen feel how the liver feels how the spleen feels today many times professor of medicine has not even seen his students he doesn't even know them our professor knew us one by one so where have we reached the government is not sensitive about quality 
not all. In this country, if there are thousands of medical colleges, there are any hospitals and NABH accredited. There are six hospitals in the country which are NABH certified. There's no accreditation, there's no quality out there. Without quality, how do you expect any industry to grow? There's no quality. There's no quality control in hospital output. How do we expect the good quality outcome when there's no quality? We are, our pharma sector has, is disappointing us so much. The output of the pharma sector is spurious medicines. Incomplete medicines, no quality again. They are in private, but here, the private hospitals, government is asking us that we'll give you more money in Swar Sati and uh, Aishman Bharat if you are NABA certified. What about your own hospital? Why can't they be? Because you know that it will take next 20 years to certify them. That means by knowing fully well that you are peddling sub quality, sub standard services, you're accepting it. Somewhere we have to wake up. Somewhere we have to put pressure on government to accredit their own hospital. That bridge has to be built now. Otherwise, we are going back to a situation where we will not be able to stop people from coming to private hospitals. How will you stop it? Quality will decide growth. Your quality as a student will decide your growth. If you're hardworking, your boss will promote you. If you know more knowledge, boss will promote you. If you work harder, boss will promote you. If you deliver more result on the table, boss will promote you. If not, you will not promote. Same thing. If the hospital provides good quality, eventually people will see it and appreciate it. And they will grow you. If you don't provide quality, how will they? You will not grow. So government hospitals are not meant to grow, but there's no quality. They are growing because there's so much of disparity in our uh, society. The poor patient cannot think of private hospital. So he has to go to government hospital because there's no option. He doesn't do it by choice. He does it because there's no option. Cost is so paramount in our life. If you don't have money, like somebody said that uh, 8 to 10 lakhs are a for nursing education. Dr. said that. If that is the way, how many people can afford it? So they go to Bangalore. You know, Bangalore, three years, they have online courses in nursing. Those students come back from Bangalore, registered with Bangalore. Those nurses have not seen IV drip. I'm telling you the truth. No quality. So the, because the, they have a certificate and nobody wants to take them, but there's no option because no one understands. So we take them. Who dies? Your brother and sister in the hospital. I know what nurses can do harm to the hospital. So we need to really bridge this gap. We need to bridge this gap where quality must be inclusive in the cost. Final point, the way things are growing in our country, rest of the world, where government has discovered, which is a very good thing for healthcare, Nothing could be better than this for healthcare. The advantage of health as a votes. Health are nothing but votes. Government suddenly realized we are very happy because that's how universal healthcare has coming in. Ashman Bharat is happening. Swasthi is happening. Mamrita is happening in different places. Biju Kalyan Swasthi Yojana is happening in, in uh, Odisha. Everywhere the government has agreed to pay for poor patients. Because government is agreed to pay for poor patient. Now, their money is going to the government hospital. So they get some extra money. They can invest into their growth. Private hospitals can accommodate them. So we can treat more patients. So it's a win-win. All three stakeholders are win-win. Private hospitals are happy. Patient is happy. Government hospital is happy. And of course, government is happy. So I think in a health entrepreneurship, as I have mentioned, so the universal healthcare, the walk which we are doing now, reaching there will probably decide a healthy nation. And in that walk, 
the quality, the role of government, the private, civil society, all have to be right and just. Thank you very much for inviting me. Very nice of being here with you all. Thank you.